I'm Rachel Arana. I am a team leader for the Opiate Collective. I service the homeless people in the street with whatever resources they need. I also help clean the streets with syringes to keep safe from HIV, Hep C, and whatever abscesses that, you know, from reusing needles. And I give them my ear because sometimes they just want to communicate. They just want to let things out. Sometimes they need that because they have really no one to go to to talk. I love my relationship with my participants. Me doing the work that I'm doing, yes, it reminds me every day not to go back to what I did, but it empowers me to help them as much as I can. I'm here to show people that I'm actually here to help you as who you are, whatever you are, whenever you're ready. I know what it is to sleep in the street. I know what it is to sleep on the train. I know what it is to sleep on the park bench. You know, so I don't judge nobody. If I did that, then I'd be in the wrong line of work. It's a good feeling because, like I said, I was there at one time. I see the participants, and I also see myself as far as being where they're at. One thing about me, it was always told to me when I started this profession, I need to meet people where they're at and I feel strongly about that. What keeps me strong is my team going out every day, engaging with the participants. I tell them my story and they listen. And they say, wow, this guy has been where I'm at. If he could do it, I could work my way to do it too. It's not impossible, you know? That's what makes Acacia special to me. My name is Paul Lynch. I'm the outreach coordinator here for the Opiate Collective here at Acacia Network. Since I've been with Agassi, I actually wear many hats. I'm actually an administrative assistant for one of the programs here, an outreach coordinator, which that's what I do for the collective, and I'm also a referral liaison between us and the different housings that we have out there. Educating the community is, um, I think, is very important to avoid the stigma that's out there right now. Family members of mine were participating in Promesa. I was around it as a kid, and I grew up in a neighborhood which was a challenging neighborhood, and because I know I was able to make it out of those situations, I feel like it's helping me now better help people understand it and help them possibly get out of it as well. When I was approached to come and join the Opiate Collective, it kind of fell right in where I needed to be. You know, my father had just passed away uh, from a heart attack, but he was also someone who had heroin um, substance use issues, right? So it, it, it was kind of like God sent that the Opiate Collective kind of, so to speak, fell on my lap. You know, we work in the community where I grew up, right? So wanting to help our people, my people, right? Um, wanting to see our community do better and feel better. Um, and just giving them a voice when they don't feel like they have a voice. The housing is a huge barrier for our clients. They're sleeping on park benches. They're sleeping under the park benches. They're sleeping by our schools. You know, I'm a mom, so of course, I wouldn't want my child to walk past syringes on the street and things like that, but where else are they going to go? They have no other place to be. What makes me most proud about the Bronx Opiate Collective is the collaboration between all of the community-based organizations, harm reduction and non-harm reduction agencies working together to better our community. That's what makes me the most proud.